Cody, thanks for joining us. To start, can you tell us about your history, being an artist, and how you got started on the tattooing journey? Um, so I kind of fell into it, to be honest. Uh, I, you know, was 18, 19, young and dumb. I was working a factory job, had a bunch of money, and no idea what to do with it, so I started getting tattooed, and one day I just kind of asked, uh, the guy who's tattooing me, you know, how do you tattoo? And he kind of explained the whole like apprenticeship thing. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, yeah, like I know you apprentice, but like how and whatever. And he was like, well, you just kind of study under somebody and train. Um, basically, just learn from them. And then when you stop sucking, you start tattooing other people. And uh, he, uh, in, I guess the most professional way to say it, uh, asked if I sucked or not. And mm -hmm. um, I said, well, you know, I used to draw in high school. And he told me to bring in some stuff when um, my next appointment was. So uh, next appointment came around, I brought in some stuff. And he's like, yeah, you're okay. Like, it's there. You know, you just need to refine everything. So, you know, learning how to tattoo is easy, but, like, learning everything else that comes with it is the hard part. So, you know, anybody can tattoo, but learn how to do it well is a completely different thing what age do you think you were when you kind of realized that you had an aptitude for art and drawing oh, man um I, I didn't even i don't even think i'm that great to be honest i mean that's the biggest thing i just like doing it um ever since i was you know little i remember i was always drawing and stuff just because uh, my parents didn't like me playing video games and stuff all the time so when i would get uh dropped off at the babysitters, uh, you know, one one babysitter had a bunch of video games and stuff, and I would do that all day, and then the other one, I wasn't allowed to touch any of that, so I had to draw and, like, paint and be creative all day, so um, one of, you know, those instances kind of, like, led me to, you know, just drawing all the time at middle school, high school and stuff, I just took a bunch of art classes and stuff like that, um, just kind of, like, general education stuff like it wasn't really anything you know special but you know i didn't uh pursue it as uh hard as i should have you know looking back hindsight is mm -hmm. 20. i wish i would you know cared a little bit more about it but i mean that's half the journey right yeah and exactly i can't i think that when you're young you don't know what you want to do but was there a point where you go and you realize shit I, okay, maybe I can't be an artist, but I can be a tattooist. And then you go, well, okay, that is what I'm going to pursue. Did you have that moment? Yeah, uh, it was kind of a weird uh, and a weird point in my life. Like, uh, God, I know it's, that was 2011, 12 ish, I think. Uh, so. After, this was like a couple of weeks after I the guy was like, you know, bring in your shit um, next week. Can I swear? Is that a thing? That's fine. You can swear. Okay. All good. Okay. <laughs> I'm interviewing um, a tattooist. You can 100% swear. Okay. I just I wasn't sure what like what kind of uh, you know podcast you're running. All here, good. So. Pirate. Um, fair enough. Um, so yeah, when I went back to his shop and he's like yeah you don't suck whatever if you want to hang out for the next couple of weeks to see how you like it you're mm -hmm. welcome to so i did that and at the time it was you know a very small shop it was him and one other artist who did his own thing so it was literally just him working and his receptionist who ran all of his stuff um he was pretty well known in the area for just being you know it was kind of that old school uh if you want you know bright bold colors uh you know you went to this guy you know it was just the end of that era mm -hmm. um, you know before cell phones and google were a thing you know people would still print off pictures off of their home printers and bring them in you know like that's what it was at the time but um he fired his receptionist like the second week i was there just it well wow. she's got her job or something so he's <laughs> like hey do you want a full-time job and i was like i kind of already work like you know 80 hours a week at the factory but um, it basically turned into whenever you're not at the factory, you're welcome to come here work. I'll pay you to work here, you know, when you're not there. So um, over the next couple of weeks, uh, I basically just kind of spent more and more time there. And then um, there was one day, uh, this guy was kind of like a huge piece of shit. <laughs> but 
Um, we'll get to that, I'm sure. Um, so he came in one day late, per usual, after I'd opened up, um, and then said, hey, I need you to draw this half sleep for me. I'm hungover. I need you to draw this for me because I don't have time. And I'm like three, four weeks in at this point, you know? So um, I have no idea what I'm doing. And he's just like, here are the references. Give me some semblance of a line drawing. And, um, you know, I'll fix it up when I get done with my first mm -hmm. assignment. So, okay, I start drawing. And throughout the day, I, you know, get some semblance of a design together. It was a memorial tattoo for this dude's grandma mm -hmm. or something. Uh, it was like an owl sitting on a signpost with like a trucker hat or some shit, you know, just random Googling, mishmashing stuff together. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this guy comes in, he gets the tattoo, and, um, you know, he was super jazzed about it, just fucking stoked. And then uh, he goes and takes a look in the mirror, and he started crying, and I was like really off put by it. Mm -hmm. like, it was just a weird like why is it like don't have man crying right now? <laughs> <laughs> like and then he like hugged the tattoo artist and I was just like uh, like I didn't know what to say or do I was just kind of sitting in the corner um, and then like he laughed or whatever and he gave him dude a fat tip and uh, I cleaned up and you know locked everything up and uh, as wow. we went to the car and everything he flips me uh, you know the, the tip it was like three hundred bucks and then he paid me for the day which was like another 100 150 bucks and it was like you know uh i had what why and he was like well you did all the work i just tattooed or whatever and you know driving home that day was kind of like the first time in my life that like i felt accomplished by something you know mm -hmm. like i made the art that like made someone so happy they cried you know kind of deal. and i all i'd done is work retail or you know work mm -hmm. in the factory of people bitching about their life and how much it sucks and like <laughs> all the problems and everything but like i i felt good you know and it was like yeah i i could do this you know and it's just kind of since then been kind of chasing that feeling of like wanting to make people happy with art and that's mm -hmm. kind of how i remember where i am you are from a city called green bay wisconsin which i've been yes. unlucky enough to spend a significant amount of time in yeah it's known for beer and cheese and not a lot else. Packers. And the Packers, of uh, course. How, how do you think that kind of, you're in a place that isn't known for its creativity, how hard is it to become <laughs> an artist, a recognized artist from a um, city like that? That's the thing. It, so Green Bay has a lot of creativity. It's just stifled by everything else in the culture there. Um, like the music scene is very, very big there. Like the art scene is very, very big there. It's just not appreciated there. So pretty much everybody goes elsewhere. Um, you know, there's a lot of like, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot. There's a fair number of like actors, actresses, and everything mm -hmm. that are from the Midwest and everything. Same thing with musicians. It's all born from that like. I don't want to say, like, angst, but that, like, mm -hmm. desire to get the fuck out of that, yeah. like, shitty area. And, you know, all of the, like, you basically turn your boredom and emotion into some semblance of, like, creativity. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people do. And some people, you know, cheese, beer, football, they choose to drink and, you know, waste their life away. And some people choose to do something with it. Some people get out. Some people stay there. And, you know, it kills them. It's what you make of it, you know? Some people love it there, and it's just, it wasn't for me. So you're not based in North Carolina. What was the main reason for, like, you relocating there? Was it to pursue just a better quality of life and more <laughs> artistic opportunities? Um, it, it, I was just kind of along for the ride, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I was dating this girl out in L.A., and uh, I had plans to move out there, and that fell through. Um, uh, and then an artist I had worked with for a few years ended up moving out to North Carolina because he also wanted to get the fuck out of Wisconsin because it sucks. Um, no offense to people living there, like, <laughs> you do you. <laughs> but um, he wanted to get out. He hated winter. You know, he was just done. So he moved to North Carolina, and when things with, you know, 
the girl had fallen through. Uh, I wasn't going out to LA anymore. Um, I was just like, hey, uh, I haven't been to the East Coast in a while. Like, I've never been to North Carolina. Like, you guys have some openings out there? And I got a week off. And um, he was like, yeah, come on through. You know, fucking, it's your birthday week. Like, we'll mm-hmm. take you out. We'll do a bunch of shit. It's literally, uh, you know, it was like a block away from the ocean. So, I mean, it was one of those things, like, I went out there, the, the town was really cool and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, the town I was actually working, or that they were working in, where the shop was, was really small, and like, 2,000 people. So, really small. Um, but then, you know, the next town over was the big town that everybody would hang out in. And it was really nice, you know, kind of up-and-coming arts market district, like, all that fancy stuff. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I uh, came out here uh, with Tyler, actually one of our mutual friends, and um, we all had a great time, and it was, I got offered the position, and it was like, well, um, oh wait, no, the first time I came out, it was a guest spot, and then I came back a second time, and then the second time, because um, I had asked him initially when I was out there about like working here, and he said, um, you know, he had some remodeling and stuff he wanted to do and expanding, and he wanted to... Uh, you know, get all that done by the end of the year. And uh, I think I came back in spring and he pretty much had just about everything done. And I was like, hey, uh, you know, do you, are you still looking? And he's like, yeah, I mean, if you want to move across the country, the spot's yours. So, I mean, that was just kind of that. I was looking for any excuse to get the fuck out of Wisconsin. And I was kind of like sick of working where I was. I just wasn't happy anywhere I was like ending up. So I, wanted to be on the safe side and I figured uh, you know working with somebody I had worked with and gotten along with for a while was great and then um, I just jumped ship and then uh, COVID hit like three months after Mm -hmm. I moved so that was fun so if we double down on the kind of the pandemic tattooists artists Mm -hmm. how did it affect you guys and are you now (laughs) seeing the knock-on effect with the business coming back um it was weird. So, I mean, like, the whole pandemic was, um, it was, like, I don't even know how to describe it. So, because of the fact that a lot of artists are considered, like, independent or general contractors, um, we're not technically employed by somebody. We don't, like, mm-hmm. you know, um, we don't technically pay taxes, like, yeah. on a paycheck. Um, we have to pay ours at the end of the year when we, you know, do all of our taxes kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but then... Uh, so there was zero assistance for us. We're just out of work. Um, so it was about three, three and a half months. It was just nothing. And then, uh, you know, there's whispers of, you know, uh, loans the businesses can get. And it's like, maybe we'll get some money. Um, you know, I used to not be good with money. I'm still not the best, but, um, I'm a lot better than I was. So now I, um, you know, thankfully have learned to, you know, save like a couple Mm -hmm. grand here and there just, in case something happens, the car, you know, shifts the bed or, you know, something goes out. Yeah. Of course. Thankfully, I had a little nest egg. Um, I mean, also, this, at the same time, I was living rent-free because uh, my happy ass, when I decided to move to North Carolina, I decided to move in a little pop-up trailer, camper. Um, so I was literally just living in my boss's backyard in a camper. <laughs> I had solar panels. Uh, I had plumbing in it. Uh, we ended up sticking a fireplace in there and a big screen TV. So uh, we had a couple of hurricanes come through and the power got knocked out. But I was sitting pretty with my uh, you know mobile hotspot and air conditioning while everybody is out of power. <laughs> Not a bad way to do it, right? Let's double. Yeah. To, let's move on to your art. You have a, quite a unique style. It you you would say your main specialisms are manga. And lewd, would you say? Um, things I like doing. I don't get to do as many lewds as I would like. Um, but um, anything pop culture related, really. Um, you know, manga and anime is typically where I'm the happiest. Um, but you know, it it just comes from the upbringing of like you know where I learned. It was you know anything that walks in the door, um, you should be able to test you. Um, to you know some semblance like obviously you like you know I'm not going to be the best at photorealism but I still have you know some concept of how to do it and I'm yeah. able to do it to you know end degree but you know obviously you don't come to me for photorealism kind of a thing um, it, 
style is primarily, I guess, influenced through like a lot of traditional um, stuff because that's just you know how I was taught. Um, mm -hmm. you know, traditional Japanese played a huge part in that, and then I kind of fell in love with a lot of you know, traditional stuff. So it's a lot of like uh, uh, contrasting line weights, um, like muted colors against like bright colors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very distinct. Um, usage of like black in the uh, shading coloring and just like muting a lot of like the color tones uh, and where do you want to kind of take your art going forward i mean that's that's a journey i don't even know where that's uh i just want to keep doing you know cool tattoos i guess um it's like you know one year i'll be like i really love doing japanese stuff and then the next year i'll be like yeah i'm I don't like doing that anymore. So, I mean, it kind of mm -hmm. ebbs and flows, but I mean, the one thing that's always stayed constant is like anime, video games, pop culture things. Uh, so, you know, a lot of my stuff tends to have like a lot of contrasting line weights. There'll be, you know, thicker on one side, thinner on the other side kind of thing. And there's usually either bright colors. I'm like, recently it's been a lot of like uh, character portraits. So, um, you know, a lot of closer up shots, like faces and stuff like that. So, um, I've been working a lot with different like color theory, so I'm hoping to expand more into uh, weird color theory. I guess um, that's a whole other thing in itself. Just learning how to use one color to make another color look like something else. You know? Wow! See, when you get a tattoo, you you don't even think of that. You don't think of half the work and half the things that you're yeah. thinking about when you're doing a tattoo. And hearing this mm -hmm. from a tattooist is very insightful. Mm -hmm. Um, how would you, if you had a person walk into a shop for the first time, or mm -hmm. to get their perfect tattoo, what advice would you give them? Um, for starters, I mean, so there's a lot of history with it in terms of, um, I, I'm not super familiar with, um, like, your side, uh, like, uh, England, UK, Europe, mm -hmm. like, as far as tattoo history, um, I know very little about it, but, um, American tattoo history, there's a lot of, like, stigmas that are still attached to a lot of things, so, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, you know, walking into a tattoo shop, you, it was basically, like, there's a stigma that, like, you know, flash, you have tattoo flash, you pick it off the walls, that's what you get, um, because that was the thing for so many years. Now, it's kind of branching more towards, like, a lot of custom work, people are allowed to be more artists. Um, so the biggest thing I would say is choose an artist whose style you like and go with that artist. Hmm. Um, strictly because you obviously are drawn to their art for a certain reason, but try not to micromanage is the best thing. You obviously like their art for a reason and try to, you know, allow them to be themselves. You know, give them an idea, give them a theme, a general concept, and, you know, include a few important things that you're looking to, like, have in it. But try not to like bog it down, you know. Ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag. So you talk about finding artists, and now it's easier than ever to find an artist you like anywhere in the world. How has Instagram revolutionized your industry? Uh, it's a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really awesome because you have like this the same thing with the internet, the unlimited you know wealth of knowledge, um, you know, at your fingertips and. Um, so, I mean, finding a tattoo artist around you is easy. Finding a tattoo artist that you like is easy. Uh, whether they're close to you or not is, uh, you know, another thing. But that's mm -hmm. the thing I'm finding out is a lot of people are more than willing to travel uh, long distances. I had a dude um, who's from Puerto Rico. Like, he's flying into the U.S. to get tattooed. Um, wow. You know, that's, you know, a couple thousand miles away. Um, you know, people flying from across the U.S., you know, that's two, three thousand miles away, you know, just to get tattooed here at the shop by me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's absurd. Like, it's crazy to me. Um, what were well, the uh, negative uh, side? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to get there. Uh, <laughs> um, it, there's just so much, and that's, like, the overwhelming thing about it is there's so much going on, and the... Mm -hmm. and uh, I guess toxic trait of like always having to be on your phone, mm -hmm. um, especially with social media. Like I generally despise social media, despite um, you know it's 
many benefits. It's the fact that people expect you to be on your phone. Like they send you a message, they want to answer instantly. Yeah. Um, you know, like I'm I'm not a business. I'm a person. You know, at mm-hmm. the end of the day. Um, so like I try to respond to you know all emails, you know questions. Like you know I give people my social media. I was like, hey, if there's any questions, anything at all, ask me. I'd rather you ask me 20 questions at 3 a.m. rather than go to WebMD and find out you have cancer or something. You know. <laughs> But, you know, like, I'm only one person, you know, yeah. and, like, if I have, you know, 100 people messaging me, so, for instance, every single post that I have to make, um, you're allowed up to 20 tags. I'm going to use every single one of those 20 tags. That's 20 individual messages that get sent out to each one of those tags, and then on top of that, you're allowed up to 30 hashtags, I believe it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just more things. So my inbox is just littered with you know, uh, sent messages, tags, hashtags, random messages, you know, and sometimes messages get lost and, you know, people get a little upset about that. So, you know, it's just trying to mitigate as much of that as possible and trying to keep up with the hustle and bustle of everything, you know. I hate being on my phone and some people are really about that. So if you were to have a film made about you, who is playing you in that film? What actor? Oh, man. Ooh, <laughs> can it be bad answers only? A bad answers only are fine. Okay, um, if I had to choose a bad answer, I would choose like uh, Elijah Wood or Daniel Radcliffe, just because they just kind of have like that bucket personality at this point. They're just doing whatever is fun, mm-hmm. and uh, I kind of I fuck with that. Uh, what is the worst tattoo you've ever done? Oh, man. <laughs> Um, there, there's a few, um, worst tattoo, oh, like, in terms of quality, or, like, I fucked up, or just, like, worst idea? Okay, what's the, what's the tattoo you've done, where you've looked down and gone, that sucks, I feel bad? Um, have you seen your thigh? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's fine. <laughs> so, who anyone who doesn't know, I've got a trash can on my thigh that was done uh, by Tad, by Cody. I don't think it's that bad. And if it is, uh, it signifies everything that was part of that journey. Who would be your dream client? Oh man. Um, who do you, you know, what famous person do you really want to tattoo? Oh, oh man, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Like, just I know. Uh, I feel like it would be an interesting time just you know, listening to him talk shit to everybody. That's a, that's like a fair enough answer. Know. That's a good answer. Yeah. Um, and what kind of, okay, we do a bit of promo here. What are your kind of plans for shows, etc. cetera, uh, across the next year? Where are you going to be at? Anything you want to promote? Um, we'll... So the only thing for sure I have coming up right now uh, at the moment um, it is Anime Inc. Con uh, 2022. It takes place in Richmond, Virginia, uh, the 21st of October and the 23rd, or 21st through the 23rd of October uh, this year. Um, that is the only convention I have planned so far. Um, but um, that's pretty much anybody who's anybody in the anime uh, tattooing industry in the U.S. is going to be there. So that is definitely something you want to see. Um, they have. Uh, it's actually about twice the size of last year, and uh, it was huge then, and now we have our merch, so any imports, uh, figurines, t-shirts, stickers, posters that, you know, anybody who's anybody in the anime world that you've ever wanted to get tattooed by is going to be there. So what, how do you see your future in the tattoo industry? I mean, I, it's something I think about a lot. And uh, I, my main goal or drive kind of stems from that, like, initial, um, you know, interaction of, like, why I want to keep doing it. It's just I just want to keep making cool art for people who appreciate it, you know, mm-hmm. and somewhere out there somebody's going to like it. You know, it's not for everybody. Not everybody likes it. Some people think I really suck. Some people think I'm the best tattoo artist ever, and it's all perspective. You know, I just want to be able to keep making a living, making, you know, art that people like. That's pretty much where I want to go, whether it's, um, you know, owning my own shop, opening up a chain, uh, you know, creating a new machine or a new ink or, you know, whatever it is. I just want to be able to make people happy with art. If I have some hand on that, like, I'm, 
I'm all right with that. 